Speaking Human. Today on Speaking Human, we imbibe the latest packaging innovations from top beverage brands. We verify the icy coldness of Coca Cola, warm up to the holiday season with Starbucks, and get drunk on originality with Absolute Vodka. Chug, 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 chug. Speaking Human. Welcome to Speaking Human, the official podcast of Monsters Unlimited, a creative agency with a business brain. I'm Shad Conley, and I will only consume a beverage if I have official visual confirmation that its contents are the absolute perfect temperature. That's what. That's just who I am. And I'm Patrick Jebber, and I have a second mortgage on my house because I buy too much Starbucks. Shh, it's the Red Holiday Cups. This is your first time checking out the podcast. Each episode, we discuss, debate, and review the latest buzz from around the marketing world. On today's episode, we'll explore the power of product packaging as a marketing tool. We'll look at some recent changes and innovation from a few of our favorite beverage makers. So get ready to quench your thirst for amazing marketing insights. All right, Patrick, so let's talk about the role that packaging plays in marketing. It's something... I think a lot of people don't think about you think of marketing and packaging as kind of two separate things but in fact they're very much within the same ballpark whether shoppers realize it or not they like the experience of packaging physical packaging because great packaging goes a long way in building that relationship with a product think of apple jawbone the makers of those bluetooth headsets and jam box speakers they 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 give you an experience and they're not messing around when they do it you know they're they're very substantial packaging uh, around their products yeah and it's something you know we don't as the consumer it's something you don't necessarily consciously think about but you know this thing you're looking at can make you want it affect how you perceive the brand i mean it can influence you in so many ways that you don't necessarily think about when you just see something on the shelf you know yeah but you know i bring up those two as great packaging but then you think about like really horrible packaging like where you actually have to use like scissors or a knife to cut around the edges and you're like damn it i wish they'd just make this thing a little (laughs) easier to get to you know or toys where they've got those twisty ties on the back of the boxes. You got to untwist like a thousand of them to get this thing off there. It's a freaking stuffed animal. I don't need, I mean, nobody's going to steal this thing from the box. Don't put that much stuff between me and getting to it. You know, quite a sensitive point for you. Understandable. Uh, (laughs) Where my, my brain automatically goes, I think of like being in a grocery store and you're, you're in the, like the salad dressing aisle And you know how generic versions of stuff, the packaging can be horrible. (laughs) You know, it's so Mm -hmm. bad. It's not just like it's a different product. And you know it's cheaper, but you're like, "Eh, what? do I want to pay more for the one that looks nicer? Yeah. You know, I mean, that's a true consideration because it's so, when you see something like appealing packaging versus non-appealing packaging, even if there's a different price point, you, you know, you think twice. Good packaging, you know, gives you a good visual that stimulates your brain in a way that makes you say, I want that. And you brought up the example, you know, of the iPhone. I can think of getting my iPhone in its nice little box with its like solid packaging and it's kind of a religious experience as you as you take <laughs> it out and set it up. So but we're gonna today, you know, we chose to focus on beverage packaging, which I think is kind of interesting because you know, when it comes to beveraging, one, without packaging, they'd just be puddles on the floor. And uh, two, the packaging plays even maybe a bigger role than it would for, say, electronic products or other stuff because that's all you really see. You go to buy a drink, they're all in some sort of container. And how that container speaks to you or affects you or even triggers emotions or brand recognition can play a big role in the things you choose or how you perceive them. All right, so let's get into, we're going to talk about a trio of different beverage brands and give our thoughts on that using our amazing review system that consists of three levels. Superhuman, that's the best. Human, it's average. Subhuman, that's poor. And the first one we're going to talk about is Coca-Cola, is, especially in recent years, they've been doing a lot with packaging, trying some different things, throwing some different ideas out there. The latest one being the cold activated can, which when you have a can of Coke at the ideal temperature, ice cubes will appear on the outside. When it's warm, nothing on the outside. 
once you see all these ice cubes, you know it's at its ideal cold temperature. How do you feel about this amazingly innovative packaging, Patrick? <laughs> I think gimmicks sometimes work. Sometimes. Uh, I don't think that any of these gimmicks are marketed that well. So I, I, on the shelf itself, I don't think anybody's going to know that this product packaging does this. I think that standing out on the shelf and trying to do something different is a good thing. Yeah. And they did something, I think it was this past summer, I forget what country it was in, a bottle made entirely of ice. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which I thought was pretty cool, you know, and an interesting idea. And I like that they're trying some different things. This one, eh. Coors Light did something, kind of a similar thing with the cold activated can. I thought it made more sense in the realm of beer where you want something that's icy cold with, you know, your pop can. It's either in the refrigerator or it's not, right? You know? Yeah, yeah. If you, yeah, that's a key indicator. It might be cold. I don't know. <laughs> I guess in the store, you know, it'd be nice to see that, but I don't know that it has much functional usage. I like that they're doing something different. So where do you come down on this, Patrick, with Coca-Cola's cold-activated can? What's your rating? I don't know. Subhuman, I would probably say. I don't know if it does anything um, in terms of the marketing. I'm kind of the same way. I'll probably fall on the human side, but I'm like, between subhuman and human, there's nothing too exciting about it like i said coke's done better things this is kind of uninteresting and pointless <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so let's let's move from you know the cold drinks on to the warm drinks and let's talk about this is you know something that happens every year starbucks sells the season of sipping you can tell it's the holiday when Starbucks goes to their holiday cups a warm red with some what is it snowflakes or ornaments or something on it Basically changing the color of the cup, making it look a little different. Does this work for you, Patrick? Does this reach you any better? Does it make you want Starbucks more? I think that what Starbucks does really well is that they make it about the season. You know, I go back to my statement earlier about the the experience. And people love the holidays. And Starbucks has built this really good branding around that cozy, warm feeling that their customers have during this magical time of year. It's cold outside. It's nice time for a hot beverage kind of thing. You know what I mean? Ex uh, I know exactly what you mean. This is one of those things that it falls into the, the best kind of marketing. I, I always say simple and effective. And that's kind of what it is. All they're really doing, they're changing the cup, but it kind of gives you that warm holiday feeling. You want one. It tickles the holiday emotions and it kind of, you're like, oh, I should be sitting in front of the fire with a warm drink. So it's like, you know, a subtle change that just makes a difference. And I also like that if just for a portion of the year, it strips that corporate feeling, gives you something much warmer. And it's a little difference that makes a big difference, so yeah. oddly enough. You no, know, they have a great marketing team. They make it holiday-esque without a specific religion. Yeah, no, exactly. They're, I mean, there's a reason they're one of the most popular and recognizable brands in the world. They, Their branding is very good. And uh, they do things, their marketing is very strategic and always, almost always, you know, exceptionally well-timed and everything. So this is superhuman for me, surprisingly enough. Yeah. I, and I don't even know if we need to go into it. I mean, we've given all the reasons, but I would say, yeah, definitely superhuman for this one. All right. So now we go from the warm cup of Java to something a little harder. Talking about the booze, people. Absolute serves up a bottle of originality. So here's what Absolute has done. They have all these limited edition bottles of vodka where they add it's some sort of blue chemical or something, I don't know, that gives it sort of a, a blue liquid stream to every bottle. No two bottles will look the same. I think they did like 4 million of these or something. Everybody gets a different bottle of vodka. What do you think about this idea, Patrick? Absolute, I think, is one of those iconic brands that can do just about anything. They could just do these very creative ads and campaigns and their packaging, their branding is very simple, but they're also not afraid to try new things within the brand paradigm. So you see things like this where they just make every bottle unique. This was a pretty good idea for, for one major reason. You know, you get this bottle that each one is unique and it almost gives you a reason to keep the bottle around after you fit it. You you drink all the vodka, and then it's kind of like a collector's item. You know, something that sticks around. Meanwhile, you're al also keeping the absolute brand. Say you stick in the corner and fill it with coins, or just because you think it's cool, you stick flowers in it. I don't know. 
but it's a way to kind of give people something that they'll keep after the initial beverage, which obviously, you know, no one's keeping the Coke can, but That's you're, right. taking, you're taking your packaging and you're kind of making it a branding asset, which I think is a pretty smart idea. It has a, you know, it kind of has an art angle that goes with, goes with the brand well that fits and it's a little bit elegant, elegant edge that I thought was pretty cool. So I actually really like this idea. Yeah, I did too. I would probably give it a human because it's average for me. I'm trying to be a little bit more. Your standards. You got high standards. You're trying yeah, to trying... like something superhuman has to blow you away. Yeah, I fall more on the superhuman side. I, I think I like how they changing it up in a way that might encourage people to buy. Definitely more so than Coke, probably even more so than Starbucks. You know, it's more of a, a draw, a big deal. They've also built a pretty good marketing campaign around it, if, you know, as opposed to just, you know, something like Coke where you're like, eh, that's kind of interesting. You know, they're actually using it strategically to sell more Absolute. I would hope so. They want to sell more, right? <laughs> more vodka. Uh oh, walking. <laughs> it comes back every time. So, anyways, you know that's where we fell on those campaigns, which is it's it's kind of a broad spectrum of different approaches. So it's an interesting conversation. What do you think, Patrick? As far as takeaways for the listeners, for the people out there, from a human perspective, yeah. packaging is all about that experience. So I say, follow your brand instinct, build a relationship through packaging. The biggest takeaway is even if you don't have a physical product per se, remember that anything can be packaging. So your website, the emails mm. you send off uh, to your customers or your subscribers, video webinars, podcasts, it's all an experience and be conscious of it because it's it's the packaging around your brand. Um, whether or not you have something physical that they're buying, it could be you know your service. So make that experience count. What do you think of that? I like that a lot, you know, and I like what you said. I was thinking it almost the other way. I was thinking just like your website, you know, your packaging is sort of this representation of your brand that people interact with. So I really like how you put that together too. Um, you know, my thought is, as I said in the beginning, don't underestimate the power of packaging. You know, it's not an area you necessarily want to skimp or not be strategic with. Uh, it is part of your marketing strategy, so you want to make it fit with your brand. You want to make it part of that whole. You know, when you're putting together a strategy, you need to think about how your packaging will affect people and their perceptions. You know, how it will trigger those emotions, and how it will market your product or service. So that's where we fall, and it's made me thirsty. I'm parched. <laughs> I want a cold Coke, but I don't know how I'll know. With a little absolute in Coke, or ooh. Now you're talking, mix some Starbucks in there? <laughs> that would be gross. But if you had Starbucks, <laughs> Bailey's in coffee, Yeah, obviously. Bailey's is a big one. Bailey's is a big one. Some people put whiskey in coffee, stuff like that. But people, you know, people put booze in anything. <laughs> As we get ready for these rum and Cokes, why don't you take us out, Patrick? That's it for today's show. You can listen to current and past episodes of the podcast at speakinghuman.com. That's speakinghuman.com. You can also subscribe to the Speaking Human podcast in the iTunes store. That's right, the iTunes store. Uh, Email us with any feedback, questions, or inappropriate comments. And we always say inappropriate, but you know you can send us appropriate comments at ideas, <laughs> ideas at thinkmonsters.com. We'll be back next time with more marketing buzz. Catch you then, humans. Speaking human. <laughs>